Ladies, this video is for you. Now, the title of this video is Why Men Don't Want to Marry or Date Single Women. Obviously, before we start, we got to have a caveat here. I'm just going to throw this out there. At no point in this video will you hear me say all single mothers. Um, also, I'm not trying to say negative things about single mothers or anything like that. We're just going to stick to the facts. And I'm doing this video for the girls out there who are inquisitive as to why men feel this way. So I am going to be brutally honest with you girls. I'm going to be direct. I'm not going to sugarcoat any of this because that's not what I do. That's, that's somebody else. That's some beta shit. I'm going to be honest with you guys, okay? And I really hope that you will listen to this with an open mind and understand why we men don't want to marry single mothers. And many of us won't even date a single mother. And we're going to get into that here and I'm going to explain all of it to you. Watch the whole video and try to take something away from this because this is not a video to bash single mothers. Um, I don't think that single mothers have less uh, value as a human than other people. Nothing along those lines. And I can tell you this, you can believe what I'm telling you because I am not pandering to any of you at all or trying to make you feel better about your situation. Uh, you can believe that honestly because I would never date you. And that's okay. Many of you right now are like, well, I would never date you. And that's cool. I'm trying to put out the idea that it's okay to have some standards, whether you're a man or a woman, as to what you will and will not accept. And this is why many of us men will not accept dating or marrying a single mother. Okay? So let's get into it. Now, many of you right now are thinking, well, that's not true. I've got kids and I've had guys date me and yes, we will sleep with you. Yes, for years on end, as long as you'll let us, we will date you and sleep with you as long as you'll let us. Yeah, it's true. Um, what you fail to realize uh, is that the reasons that men don't want to date single women are so important to us because it affects us negatively. Let's go ahead and start with reason number one. The main reason men don't want to date a single mother is because her children or child or however many she's bringing to the party is a bill. That costs money. Now I know that's a foreign idea for a lot of women out there who have always been taken care of well by their parents or their daddy or had men dote on them and give them money and handouts and whatever just so they can sleep with you. That's why they do it. Let's don't, it's not because of love. It's not, that's why they do it. That's why we do it. It's what we're interested in. I don't know if you've noticed or not, but men don't care if you make a lot of money. Men don't care if you work at the supermarket. Men don't care about your accomplishments and achievements and you've got a doctorate degree. We don't care. We care about what you look like. Period. And a lot of you right now are, well, hey, you don't look that... It doesn't matter. I'm a guy. We don't have to look good. Your job is to look good. Our job is to be a strong provider or a strong support system for you. Now, many of us may not be strong providers, but we're definitely what you would call a protector. Okay? Following along with me so far? Your children are a bill. At some point, we're going to have to pay for their pizza or whatever else they want. Um, birthday presents, gifts, all of those things. Now, many of you are like, well, that's not a bad thing. That's because you don't understand from a man's point of view. You've never had to pay someone else's way or someone else's children's way, another man's children. Now, a lot of women watching this video are thinking, well, if you love someone, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? It's love. It doesn't love mean... Love is a female emotion. I'm going to say that again. Love is a female emotion. Now, I'm not saying men can't feel love, but I want any of you women to just ask yourself honestly, what happens when a man loves? A strong alpha male who develops a loving relationship with a woman and loves her, truly loves her and values her, becomes beta to that woman. Mmm. Yeah, you see, women like a strong, powerful man who dominates them. Now, I don't just mean like bosses them around or whatever. The sexual chemistry there is based off of a domination. 
And for men, it really is kind of too. Also, we like that stuff. That's what kind of turns us on a little bit. And what I mean is once a man and woman, let's say, have been married for quite some time and that man really starts to value that woman and love her, truly love her in a way that a man loves, very different from a woman's love. Women's love is conditional. You know this, I'm not putting you down. You know this. Man's love is not. It doesn't matter if she loses her job and gets a, a job down at the supermarket or the slaughterhouse or he'll still care about her and love her and value her and cherish her because of loyalty, accountability, things that are hardwired into men, hardwired, um, even beta males. And what happens is when a man truly loves a woman in a relationship, that woman begins to lose respect for that man. Hmm, it's true. Think about it. Maybe you've been in a relationship with a guy and he just, you got to the point where you, you loved him and you really liked him and he made you feel great. And then later down the road, years later, whatever, he loved you too much. He cared about you too much. That's a man's love. When a man loves someone, it's, uh, it's enthralling. It's, it's overcoming, truly. But not quite the same for a woman. It's a little different. Now, when a man takes on a woman, he wants her to not have children because men are territorial. We don't want to raise another man's seed. We don't want to spend money on another man's seed. Yeah, we'll do it, but we'll also pay prostitutes for sex. So think about that. Maybe some of you watching this are like, well, my guy, he really took to my children and we all live together now and well, we're not married yet and we're, but he's, he's paying for sex. He's got it whenever he wants it. It's right there for him whenever he wants. And he has the upper hand and he knows it. He knows that at any time he can say, well, if you're not doing things the way I want them done, be, go back to your ex-husband. Yeah. Or get your own place and pay your own bills and... I'm sure as a single mother who doesn't work probably stays home, that should be no problem, right? Hmm. Ladies, you gotta be careful. Think about that. Let's say you found this great man and he's a what you'd call a provider male, beta, and he's willing to take on the responsibilities of another man, the children. And he is going to take care of them and be just the hero. I've heard this a thousand times from women I've dated, from guy friends of mine who are banging single mothers who are like, yeah, she thinks I'm the hero. I'm, I'm taking care of her. I'm, you know, I spend a little bit on her kids and I make her really, you know, yeah. But he didn't care. I've talked to hundreds of guys. And they're just like, yeah, it's, you know, it's like visiting a prostitute except it's legal. I'm just paying. I put out a little money here and there. You know, maybe it cost me a grand a month. Maybe it cost me two grand a month to help take care of her and her little crumb crunchers, her kids. Well, that's a low price to have sex anytime you want it. It is. In this market, if you were to try to buy sex on a daily basis from a professional, we'll call it, um, that would cost you 10000 a month. Yeah, easily. So... He's with you. He's willing to fork out a little bit of change, spend a little bit of time with your kids. He doesn't like your kids. They're in his way. That's how we work. That's how men operate. I'm going to give you an example. No mammals on this planet except humans are monogamous. None. Zero. There's not one. None of the other mammals mate for life or the idea of mating for life. We all know at this point that that's a pipe dream, but <clears throat> no other mammals do that. Do you know why? Hmm. Look at lions. Look at so many other animals on this planet. When a male lion dominates a female lion or kills the pack leader lion, he kills all the cubs, all the other lion cubs, he kills them because any resources he puts towards those children take resources away from his children. Any time that he needs to release his manly instincts, those children would be in the way. Yeah, it's true. You see, men are simple creatures. Women, not so much. They are once you get to know them and how they operate, but 
Girls, you have to understand that men don't want to take care of someone else's child. Not just that, but let's say that you're a man and you have plans to go out on a date and the babysitter cancels or the ex-husband who was going to get him for the weekend gets sick. It happens. I mean, it happens. Well, your plans just went out the window. It's you and her and the kids now. Hmm. Yep. His kids. You see, to girls, that doesn't matter as much because they can take on a man's children and be like, well, I love these children. They're good kids. They're, you know, they're quality people and they have that motherly instinct. Men do not. It's not how we operate. Now, you will obviously find beta males out there that are like, well, yeah, I'll take care of you and your kids and you're, I'll make it all right. But typically they won't marry you. Mm, starting to see that pattern, are we? You see, here's the thing. Guys will even move in with you and your kids. They'll help you pay the bills. They'll be decent to the kids if he's a decent guy. And there are decent guys out there. They'll be there and try to help with the children and try to be a good positive role model or influence on those kids. However, if you've been with this guy over a year, year and a half, and he hasn't tried to marry you yet, he's not interested in you. He's just sleeping with you. He's just sleeping with you. Think about that. Honestly, be honest with yourself. A woman knows within six months, usually even less than that, if she wants to marry this guy. She may not be ready to, but she knows how her heart feels. So do we men. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Maybe your ex-husband or the baby's daddy or whatever you want to call him. Uh, maybe he married you. Mm, maybe he did it in six months. Maybe it was a year later, but he knew and he was like, this is the one, this woman. I love this woman. When a man does actually love a woman, he'll want to marry her. He'll want to lock her down. He'll want to cuff her. He'll want to make sure she's, she's there and he's there and we're doing our thing. Not if she's a single mom and he's just a guy trying to uh, have sex. Mm -mm. He'll move in with her. He'll pay bills. He'll take care of things. He'll do everything a man should do except marry her because he will not put himself on the hook financially for the rest of his life to that woman. Why, you might ask. Great question. You see, single mothers are typically a sign of a woman who cannot pair bond. I'm sorry, it's true. 80% of divorces are filed by women, 80%. Now, that's statistics. You can look that up, you can Google it, whatever you need to do. Um, but the math of that is very telling. If you think about it like this, many men who go out and decide they wanna get married and they wanna, they'll fight for it. They'll do anything to make it work. Unless she's a junkie or an alcoholic or sleeping around or whatever. In that case, we'll go do something else. Sometimes we'll just find another girl on the side or marry her or whatever or leave and go off with that woman. But not dudes that are in love. Dudes that are in love will do anything to save that relationship because they value that woman. And you women watching this right now, every one of you has value. Some of you more than others. Some of you may not bring much to the table other than sex. And if that's the case, I mean, you're going to end up alone at some point. Because when you get too old to make the man's uh, Jimmy uh, excited, he's not going to want to be with you. Because that's what we do. That's who we are. And I know there's beta males watching this. Well, not me. I'm a good... That's what your mama told you to say, boy. You're a boy. Every man that's over the age of 30, 35 has 100, maybe even 1,000 friends that have been through this before. But you think you're different. You think the rules don't apply to you. I understand. You'll learn later. So don't, you don't even have to watch the rest of this video if that's your mindset as a dude who's watching this because you're not ready. It's, a, it's an interesting thing, female nature. You have to see it with your own eyes and experience it because you'll never believe it otherwise. Why? Because your mom raised you to be a beta male. She raised you to be the nice guy, but women don't want the nice guy. They don't. And I don't mean an asshole in the sense of treating her bad. I just meant a dominant, self-absorbed. Those are things that women really key in on. It's true. 
If you're looking for dating advice, I can't give you any better advice than just don't fucking show her any attention. I just act like you don't, whatever. It'll drive her crazy. Trust me. When we go back to earlier when I was saying that when a man marries a woman and loves her very much and she loses interest in him, it's because there's no chase there. There's no excitement there. Things become very plain and very boring. And women, watching this now, be honest. You don't like boring. You need some excitement. You need something new. You need something that's... And I don't necessarily mean even a new guy. It could be the same guy you've been with for 20 years. But he, he keeps everything exciting. And we're doing something different today. And he's got a plan. And they like that. You like that, ladies. <clears throat> it's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Everyone is entitled to be interested in what they're interested in. But what you need to understand as a woman is that men are interested in sex. Spreading our seed. It's not because we're bad people or we're immoral or any of that bullshit PC stuff that so many of you believe in. That your mom taught you to believe in. We'll just say it like that. The truth is, it's in our DNA. It's in our very makeup as humans to spread our seed as often and as far as possible. Remember what I told you, no other mammal does what we do. Hmm. Yeah. And that is why men don't want to marry a single mother. Because we as men know that, one, either this girl made her ex-husband or boyfriend or whatever the case was, so unhappy with her either nagging or inability to do things to help with the family, or was just... Um, you know, uh, emasculated him every chance she got. She made constant jokes about him. Maybe she questioned his sexuality. She's done all these things to make him feel like less of a man when her job was to lift him up. Hmm. Yeah. So we men don't do that. And when we look around, we men see things on dating sites or whatever, Facebook from you girls that say things like, well, my kids come first. My kids come first. My kids come first. Well, they should. But here's a caveat. Not if you want a man. If you had put your husband first, your baby daddy first, he wouldn't have left. Or he would not have made things so uncomfortable on you to where you had to get out away from him. Hmm, yeah. Now, so many of you girls like to say, well, he was abusive. That's bullshit. Unless you've got police reports of where he hit you, that's bullshit. I'm sorry, I know a lot of you are going to disagree and go the emotional abuse thing. And No, he was trying to have uh, you to have a little accountability. Mm -hmm. A little agency. A little responsibility. But you didn't want to because that's not fun. See, it's not fun for you to, let's say you're a single mom who stays at home all the time and your husband works or your boyfriend works or whatever he is. He works, but you just can't seem to make a hot meal at night for him and the kids. It's just too much. You can't seem to keep the house clean. Now, I'm not suggesting in a sexist way that this is things that women should be doing, but if you are the woman who's staying home and raising the kids and your man is working for you, you should do that. Mm -hmm. You should do that. That should be your goal. That should be what you're bringing to the table. The problem is too many beta males out there they, don't, they just want you to bring sex to the table. They're like, well, if the house is dirty, it's dirty. Yeah, it's fine. Eh, if there's no dinner, I'll, I'll eat something. It's, it's no big deal. The kids had frozen chicken nuggets that cause cancer. It's no big deal. Beta males do that. Alpha males will hold you accountable. Yeah, and you like the alpha male, don't you? Just as what it is. You lose respect for the beta male. You don't want to be with the beta male. Now, some of you single mothers might shack up with a beta male provider because he can help provide for your kids and he can help do all of these things that men don't want to do for another man's scene. So, the next point, the next reason we don't want to do that is we look at it and we think, well, now there's this other dude in the picture. So, if I'm going to date this single mother, what if the husband's crazy? What if he's out of his mind and he might come after you or your family or your pets or do something uh, wild? Chances are she told you, well, girls, chances are you told the next guy that he is crazy. He is an abuser and he is dangerous and he is 
Hmm. Typically not the case. Typically not the case. I know thousands and thousands of guys whose ex-wives have accused them of abuse. People I've known since I was like seven years old. Some of the most quality humans I've ever run across in my life. People who, that when we were seven, eight, nine years old, told me not to kill the snake that I was about to kill because I would be taking something away from it because it, it wasn't my place. Good people labeled as abusers. So we men tend to know that when you're saying, let's say you're a single mom and you're with the new guy now and the new guy comes in and he hears you say, oh yeah, my, my ex was really abusive. And you, we know that you want a white knight, somebody to come in and save you. We're not stupid. We've seen it happen to thousands of our friends. Thousands of our friends. So we know that that's your game. We also know that there's a very low chance that this guy was actually abusive or violent or a piece of shit. Maybe he didn't meet your requirements. Maybe you married him thinking on potential. Oh, well, he has a lot of potential. He could really go a long way. He, again, women want you to love them for who they are, girls. Want you to love them for who they are. But they don't want to love you as a man like that. We know this. You want to love him based off his potential. And when I say potential, I mean earning potential. Because you have kids. Now, girls, I understand a lot of you haven't thought about this, but it costs an average of two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars to raise a child in America right now. Two to three hundred thousand per child. So let's say you have two kids or three kids. Holy shit! That dude is on the hook for a lot of expenditures. A lot of expenditures. It doesn't mean you won't find a man to do it. Men do it all the time, all the time, just to be with that one girl. And those beta male men end up paying a much higher price for that woman than the baby dad did, or even the father. Hmm. That's a shame for us men who consider dating single mothers. Now, there are other interesting caveats that we'll talk about here for you ladies so that you truly get a scope on this. Dating a single mom is almost like <clears throat> playing someone else's video game from their save file. That may not make sense to you ladies out there, but we men want to build something with someone. We want to have a family. We want legacy. We want to be able to pass it on to our children and our grandchildren and legacy long term. Not women. No offense, girls, but y'all work on emotion. How do I feel right now? And who gives a shit if it affects my children or their health or their life or their sanity later in life, provided I get what I want right now? A lot of you women are like that. I didn't say all, I said a lot of. And if you're honest with each other, you know a lot of women like that, don't you girls? Yeah. It's an unfortunate circumstance because there are a lot of women out there who are good women whose men were actually physically abusive to them or maybe their husband died yeah maybe he died maybe he got in a car crash smashed by an 18 wheeler and he died that is unfortunate now widows a lot of men don't want to date a widow because they know that ultimately her heart belongs to that man it was never severed from that man he died and she will have a lot of emotional issue because of that. And again, not the girl's fault. She's probably a wonderful person. I've known a lot of wonderful people, a lot of wonderful girls. <clears throat> My ex-wives, both of them, were wonderful people. The first ex-wife, still a wonderful person. Uh, my second ex-wife was a wonderful person when it benefited her to love me. I'm going to say that again. The most wonderful human I've ever met when it benefited her but when the benefit to her stopped the behavior was questionable some would say somewhat um, vindictive hmm struck a chord with some of you this is why we don't like dating single mothers this is why we won't marry them like I said we will sleep with you we're not stupid that's what we're here for if you look good yeah we'll, we'll work that out We'll work around the kids if we have to, but not long term. We won't marry you. If you've been with a guy and he's been with you and the kids for two, three, four years, 
Just know he does he has no intention of marrying you. He's enjoying the sex ride as long as he can get it. And those types of dudes don't actually love you. They're enjoying themselves. And they'll tell you whatever they need, just like you'll tell him whatever you have to to, to hook him, to land him. It's it's war. Love is war. You've heard it before. Think about it, girls. Maybe you've got a couple of kids. You meet a new guy. You really, really like him. You really, really want him. And you've been together six months and you wish he'd pop the question and marry you and just be the hero and take care of you and the kids and everything else. And you so you just do everything sexual he could ever want and you just do everything to make him feel amazing and just like he's the best. You put your kid's safety on the back burner. Maybe you let him smoke cigarettes in the house even though it's bad for your kids. You do whatever you can to make him feel like he's top dog, number one, the priority. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's true. But ultimately, he's just going to provide. You want somebody to help provide. Make sure those bills are paid. Now, there are some women out there that make good money and they don't need a guy to pay their bills, and that's fine. That's totally cool. I'm not talking about those women. I'm talking about the ones who are looking for a provider male that they can cuddle with and love on and all these other things, and maybe he's not the sexiest guy and he just has a job and he's willing to pay the rent and he treats the kids okay, and... but you don't love him. Mm-mm. You don't love him. He's there. He's doing the job. You love the way he makes you feel. But that is very different than actually loving someone. See, he loves the way you make him feel. Sex. Yeah. He'll pay the rent. He'll pay the power bill. He'll, yeah, sure, he'll dole out a little money if he's living with you to help make sure that everything's running smooth so he can get sex when he wants it. Now, if the kids become an issue or a roadblock there, he'll find somebody on the side. Most guys. I wouldn't, but I'm a very different. That's a whole other, and I'm, not, again, not pandering to anyone. I'm just saying I don't believe in cheating on somebody. I have no problem telling someone uh, this isn't working out. I'd rather be alone or have a great day because I can be alone. A lot of you girls out there watching this cannot fathom the idea of being alone. Not only can you not fathom it, but many of you don't have the financial resources to make it happen. Sure, maybe you're getting some alimony, maybe you're getting child support, maybe you're getting some government assistance on top of all that, but you still need more to live the lifestyle that you want to, right? That's unfortunate. I want you girls to listen and listen well. A lot of you right now are living with a guy and your children and he is footing a lot of the bills and taking care of you. Maybe it's been a couple of years and he hasn't married you because he's not interested and you don't, you're not coming to grips with that yet. But think about this. He's allowing you to be a stay-at-home mom and he's handling all the, the bills and the finances and making sure everything's paid while he's getting what he wants and is happy with it. But what were to happen if you weren't happy with it? What were to happen if something else tickled his fancy? Ooh. Well, now he runs off with the other girl or whatever, and you, who thought you were doing really well and happiness was imminent and you had this, you got a house now maybe that you're sharing with him and bills and he's taking care. Well, all of a sudden, you're 30 days away from having to make that house or apartment payment by yourself. He's gone. He left. Or maybe he died. Whatever. Whatever happened to him, he's gone. Now you are a single mother with no job, no prospects, no nothing, and the man who was footing the bill has left. You're 60 days from being homeless, you and the kids. They won't be, don't worry. The dad will get them at that point. You see, a lot of you women like to kid yourselves and think, well, I'm doing great and everything in life is going great. And We'll just use this as an example for you. And you think, well, you know, I've got a house now and I live here with this guy and he's great and he's helping take care of the kids. And it's just a, a wonderful situation. And you really outwardly think on your social media that people are looking at it like, oh, she's doing well. Oh, man, she got a new place, new man. She seems to be really happy. Women like to show people that they're happy, even when they're not happy. Girls, right? You can debate it. You can say it's not true, but you know it's true. Hmm. Yeah. 
So this guy disappears, he leaves whatever, now you have all these bills, no job, same amount of kids, and now you're emotionally even in a worse place because you really cared about this dude or somewhat cared about the beta male provider, and then he left. Now you have no money, no resources, no anything. You've burned every bridge you've ever had with a man. Some of you. I'll give you an example. If you're a girl that's watching this right now, and every relationship, serious relationship you've ever had, not talking about one night stands or the guy you blew at Cabo or whatever, if you honestly, just be honest with yourself, you don't have to answer it in the comments or anything like that, but do you think that if that man were gone, anyone else would give you a chance? Because every relationship you've ever had, you've ended it by monkey branching to another guy. Think about that. Be honest with yourself. You were with a guy, didn't work out, you didn't like him, you got bored, whatever, tired, it didn't, you didn't feel, you weren't feeling it that day. So you found another guy kind of on the sly, on the side. And, you know, maybe uh, you're two years, three years, four years down the road, it doesn't work out with that guy you found on the sly. But if every relationship you've ever had has ended with you leaving because you've hooked up or monkey branched to another guy, well, you're a shitty person. You're a shitty person. You're not trustworthy. You have no accountability. You have absolutely no agency for any of the things that you've done or the people that you've hurt. You've just burned every bridge that you've ever come across because you're like, well, I don't need this bridge anymore. I got this rickety motherfucker. Right? Yeah. Some of y'all are with dusty ass, busted down, just decrepit dudes. Decrepit. And I'm not talking about their financial status because look, if you're a girl and you're looking for a provider and you're, it's all about the money and the whole idea of love is out the window with you and you're not worth any of us dating, I hope that none of my male friends or people ever run into you ever because you want a provider. You're a gold digger. Now you're not a gold digger in the sense of you want a Lamborghini. You're a gold digger in the sense of you'll sleep with a man, pretend to truly care about him as long as he provides for you. Uh, I think they call that whore. Whore. Oldest profession in the book. Now, I'm not saying that uh, any of you ladies out there are whores. Even if you're up to this kind of nefarious behavior. Because I understand that survival. You're trying to survive. And maybe you don't have a lot of options. Maybe you've never had a good education. You've never really held a good job, a career job. I don't mean you worked at the grocery store, bank teller, whatever, hair cutter. But maybe you've never really had any of those things. And now you need a man to help you because you haven't had that. Well, there are beta men that will step up. But again, you don't like beta males. You like a provider as you get older. Because then you're more in tune with being a woman. You're more like, well, this is just a smart business decision more than anything else. We don't want to be a business decision as men. So men over 35 years old typically don't date single mothers. Like I said, we'll sleep with them. That's it. And we'll do that as long as she allows it. But we, we don't, won't marry her. Because she's already shown that she does not have what it takes to be marriage material. See, girls, this is foreign to you because you operate off emotions. But men, we operate off of logic. And every man out there knows that whatever happened, unless your ex-husband was killed, you gave up. You quit. You don't have loyalty. The wedding vows that you took meant nothing. You have no spine, no backbone, no any of the thing that men like in other men or women. Yeah. And a lot of you, oh, well, it just didn't work out, or I fell out of love, or he was abusive, or... No loyalty. We men recognize that. We can spot it from a thousand miles away. As soon as we get with you and you start telling us about your ex and how bad he was... We realize exactly who you are. Yes, never talk to a man about your ex or anything he's done or how he was bad or how he was... <laughs> you girls got to catch up. We see that as a red flag. We see that immediately as, oh, okay. Oh, okay. She fucked things up with this guy and she wants to blame him for it. Or even if he was a bad guy, we see, oh, this guy was going through a hard part in his life probably acted inappropriately at some time, maybe said something he shouldn't have, and she didn't stick with him. 
she didn't get counseling. She didn't try to make the marriage work. She didn't, she just left. She was like, well, had enough here, I'm gone. That's why we don't date single mothers. We know that you have the ability to leave at any time. And if we get, let's say, attached to your children, we start building a bond with them. We really start to think, you know, this kid's kind of cool. You know what, man, you know what? This kid's all right. I'm gonna hang out with this kid. A lot of us will do that. Good men will do that. And bad men, provided they're getting what they want. But that doesn't make you a good man. In fact, most real men don't want to raise another kid's seed and it would never cross their mind ever to do so. Because men are territorial. We don't want to play where another man has played. Now, low value men will do that. They'll be like, well, you know, it's off. Yeah, you know, eh. But then there's always that X to deal with. There's always the visitation to deal with. There's everything else to deal with. Maybe if his child support payment is late one month, it happens to all guys. It doesn't mean he's a bad guy. Maybe, maybe he's late. I've been late. Well, that beta male provider that you're dating now, he's gonna get tired of that eventually. Not because the ex-husband isn't doing what he's supposed to, but because he is constantly on the financial end of your needs. And that's not what he was there for. He wanted sex and love. He just wanted sex. That's what we do. I mean, it's not like we don't build a bond with you or can't care about you after the fact, but initially what attracts us to you is sex. We don't ever come up and ask about your master's degree, where you went to school. We don't care. None of that matters. We're visual. You are a, a, a beauty object to us, and that is what we like. And it's not because we're bad people or immoral or any of those bullshit reasons that so many of y'all are thinking about out there or that your mom told you or the church told you or... Nope. It's just nature. It's how we as a species have survived this long. And then want to spread their seed. And it's not even that we want to, it's that we need to. You don't understand as a woman because you've never felt that need to. But men know. Men know because they need to. Now, this is important because once you understand that men have that need, now you have to think about the fact of, okay, well, so you've left your husband or whatever the case is, you're with the new guy, and let's say you have a daughter. Ooh, do you know the statistics on stepdads molesting daughters? I do, it's scary. Do you know the statistics on those stepdads being actually good people and good to the kids and meaning well and everything else and then his son molests your daughter? You got a boy in the house going through puberty with a girl that he's not blood related to. It is a sick, sick world out there and a lot of you women watching this video know exactly what I'm talking about, whether you've told anyone about it or not, don't you? And if that's the case, and you know how fucked up it made you as a result of whatever took place for some of you girls? And I don't mean fucked up as a bad part. I mean mentally hurt you. Your value didn't decrease because of what happened to you in the past. I promise. But what mentally hurt you, you'll carry that forever. And now you're putting your daughter in a position to have that same burden, aren't you? Mm. No, that could never happen because I vetted this guy. He's a really good guy. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Maybe his son is less mentally stable. Maybe his daughter molests your daughter. Hmm, do you think about that? No. No, because you're blinded with all these love and my feelings and I'm, I'm so overwhelmed with how I feel. Well, men think about that stuff where you girls tend not to. It's an unfortunate circumstance, but this is why men don't want to marry single mothers, don't want to date single mothers. Now, as you get older and the man's sex drive goes away, sure, he'll want companionship and he might marry you and be with you and take care of you for the next, till you're in diapers or whatever the case is. Sure, men will do that. But if you're under 45, 
just know that the guy that you're with who we'll say is under 50, because about 50 it starts tanking off for most men. Certainly by 40, 45, a lot of the testosterone levels are starting to come down a little bit, which allows us men to think more clearly, act more clearly, and see things for what they truly are without being pee-blinded. You know what it means. Girls, this is why it's so important to you to try to reconcile with your ex-husband if you have children, the father of your children. It's very important. Yes, a lot of you right now are saying, no, I just I can't stand that guy. And it's you need to get past the vindictive overflow of emotions that causes you to say and think these things. I'm not saying he's the great guy. I'm not saying he's the best guy. I'm saying if you want your offspring to have the best chance of not being hardened or career criminals or drug addicts or drunks, the best statistics to support that are a husband and a wife, a mother and a father raising their own children. It's just the, it's the stats, guys. I mean, it, it is what it is. You can't argue with the numbers. Single mothers tend to raise beta males. True. Single mother raised, beta male most of my life. It was the fucking worst thing that could have been done for me. Look, I love my mother. She was a saint. She did me such a disservice along the road with the things that she couldn't teach me. And that wasn't her fault. It wasn't her fault at all. My mother was a saint. Like I said, I love her. Love her to death. But there are things she didn't tell me about life that a father would have. And mine did. And at the time, I thought my dad was nuts. I was like, ah, my dad, wait, you know, he's, what? This is, it goes against everything my mommy ever told me. He was right. He was right. And he tried to warn me. He tried to tell me about these things and female nature and the behaviors and what they're going to be looking at you. All of it. And I was just like, eh, this, this guy here just doesn't have love in his heart. <laughs> There's that love word again. <laughs> They use that on you guys to tell you that, you know, you girls will use that on guys. Well, who hurt you? That's a gaslighting technique. It doesn't work on most guys that are in the know. And it's one of those things where every guy's been hurt. All of us. Every one of us. Yeah. Even the 18-year-old or 19-year-old that's had his heart broken by some girl then. And he thought, hey, well, this was real love and it's going to be forever. And yeah, his, he was hurt. We've all been hurt. You girls have been hurt. So that's really not a response to throw around in the comments like, well, he just doesn't like women. He's gay. He's... Just being honest. Just being honest with you girls so you'll understand that why men won't marry you and what to look for. If you're with a guy for more than a year and a half, I'd say, and he isn't, hasn't got you a ring or hasn't got a significant amount of savings to purchase you a ring for a marriage, he's just sleeping with you. And if you're just allowing him to sleep with you in order to get your bills paid, what does that say about you? Hmm. You don't have to live like that. It doesn't have to be that way. You can find a good man out there. You can. If you're a single mother out there and you're wanting to know, well, what hope is there for me? The answer is a much older man whose life is not dictated and ran by sex. However... You need to understand that a mature man will want you to bring something else to the table because he's not as interested in sex anymore. So you need to make sure you're doing what you need to do as part of the household, whether that's going out and getting a job and helping provide the finances to keep the blended family together or whatever, or making sure there's a hot meal every time that man comes home, making sure that the house is clean, his clothes are clean so he can go to work and not have to fool with any of that other stuff well those are the choices if you're willing to do those kinds of things for a man a lot of you women want the traditional provider man but don't want to be the traditional woman you want to be a feminist you want to say things like well i'm not his slave i'm not going to be his everything in life is a trade-off every relationship in nature and in humans is symbiotic beneficial you see, the shark doesn't eat the, uh, you know, the fish that follow it around and stick to its side. He will never eat that fish because that fish cleans him. Even if the shark gets very hungry, he will not eat it because 
it's providing a symbiotic relationship. The shark is getting something and the other fish is getting something in return. The scraps that fall off of the shark, the other little tiny fish will eat. And that little fish will hold onto that shark, follow it around and kind of clean it up. You see, relationships are symbiotic. So while you don't have to be a slave to a man, you have to bring more than sex. It's true. Now I know in your early years as a young woman, all you had to really do was show up with sex some pretty boobs, nice butt. We'll do whatever you say. Whatever, hey, whatever. We're, we're on board with it. Simps. I've been one. I'm not knocking other guys. Believe me. Just, that's what we do when we're blinded by testosterone and the need to spread our seed. Whatever you say, let's do this. So you need to understand, ladies, that it's, there's nothing inherently wrong with you as a person. But everything about you being a single mom says to us that you either A, don't pick well with your men, or B, you're lying about your ex-husband, or C, um, you gave up, you quit, you're a quitter. I, I'm not trying to shame anyone, I'm saying that's a real word in the English language, quitters, no loyalty. If we see that you're a single mom and you tell us that you left the dad because he was no good or abusive or didn't make enough money or whatever the case is, we see you as a quitter, a low-life quitter, an abandoner. You're not loyal. You see, we take these vows in church and whatever when we get married as sickness and in health, richer or poorer. Well, if that's the case and you left a man because he didn't make enough money to support you but you didn't work a job, Hmm. Well, is that man a bad man for not making enough money, or are you a bad woman for leaving and abandoning a man, perhaps the father of your children, because he didn't earn enough money while you sat on your ass? Hmm. That's a good question. Ladies, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Fellas, I hope some of you guys made it through this very long video as well, because clearly some of you can learn from this, so you don't be a beta male cup provider, a cuckold. Yes. You see, a lot of people make the misconception that the word cuckold is about a man who likes to watch his woman get, you know, drilled out or whatever by another dude. No, no, no. No, no, no. That is not what that word means. Yes, in the fetish world, that is what that means. But I don't shame anyone for their fetishes, whatever they may be. Everybody's different. Everybody's into weird, kinky stuff or whatever that, that turns them on. I don't shame anyone for that, okay? I don't. Uh, but actually, cuckold, the term and meaning comes from a bird called the cuckold. You see, the cuckold will have eggs and then carry those eggs to another bird's nest and drop them off to leave, to go live life. Because birds are so infinitely stupid, they will raise those other birds as if they're their own. The cuckold, the stepfather. You see, us men don't want to be that. Now, he doesn't want to care about the sexual annotation. That, that doesn't bother us. It's, we don't want to raise another man's seed. Every man that looks at us is like, oh, you're the cuckold. Yeah, the alpha male pumped her and dumped her or got her pregnant a few times and married her and she, whatever, it didn't work out and she left. Now, you're there to clean up his mess. And when I say mess, I don't mean mess pertaining to the children. I just mean all together. You're there to clean up after that man. Mm-hmm. You're going to put your mouth where that man has been. Mm. Cuckold. Yeah. That is the definition of that word. Yes, it has sexual connotations, you know, when dealing with a certain particular fetish. Again, to each his own. I don't shame anybody. I don't care if you're gay or what you're into. As long as you're not into girls younger than 18 and you're not into, uh, you know, grape forced entry. Those two things, you need to get some fucking help because you are a sick individual. Sorry, it's just true, guys. If you're listening and that's you, yeah, talk to somebody about that shit. Uh, so, girls, I hope this has helped you tremendously. I didn't mean for it to go on this long. Hopefully you're listening. If you need any further information, feel free to, to leave a comment. I'll make another video and deal with all the comments that way instead of having to answer them each individually. So I can hopefully address some of the concerns some of you girls are having out there. Maybe you have questions about the guy that you're with. Um, I will address all of those because I do want to help you. This isn't a video, like I said, to bash women. It's so that hopefully you women can understand that 
your children are a financial burden on us, on the guy, on the guy. And, it, and it's not that they're bad people. It's not that we don't love them or care. Or, it costs us money. And money's important to men. Mm -hmm. If a man's on his purpose and trying to do his thing and trying to progress and have some forward momentum and you are A, spending it all on bullshit as his wife, B, trying to spend it all on bullshit as his girlfriend, or C, costing him a ton of money every time y'all want to go to McDonald's and you're bringing your two, three, four, five kids along, some of you girls out there don't, can't process that, can't understand why that wouldn't be appealing to a man over and over three meals a day. And some of you girls out there just are shitty people. I'm sorry. If you've got three kids by six different daddies and you don't know who the, what the, yeah, do the math. You're shitty people. Take some accountability. Have some agency. Some of you owe your ex-husband a huge apology. Yeah. Face to face. Not on the phone, not via text message. And not a reconciliation, not a, oh, I'm trying to fix just, I did fucked up stuff to you, and I'm sorry. Sit. That's it. But many of you can't do that. Yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of you women watching this video right now, they're like, well, I'll never apologize. Some of y'all are just grown-ups with breasts. You're not even grown-ups. You're children. Adult children with breasts. That's all you are. Because you're vindictive. Because your emotions run you. Because you've got to feel excited. You've got to feel an up and a down and a high and a low and a constantly. And you think, well, I'll never, I've got too much pride to take any accountability for what I've done. Really? All right. Hope this helps, guys. I'm gone with John. Hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment if you want. Don't be too hateful. None of this was to bash anybody. It's just to talk openly about the facts. I think a good open communication is always good. See you next time.